Hey everyone, Till here. Today I'm reviewing the ASUS ROG Flow Z13 Gaming Tablet. This review is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below, as well as links to where you can buy this tablet if you are interested to get one for yourself. Alright, first of all, disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by ASUS Singapore. However, all the opinions in this video are mine. I'll just present to you my findings and you can decide whether or not this is worth the money because it is quite pricey. And this is pricey because this is a very powerful tablet with a discrete graphics card in this compact form factor. And these are the three configurations possible. There is the high-end one with the 12th gen Intel i9 processor with a 4K display with refresh rate 60Hz. And that one comes with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti and this review unit is the mid-tier one, the one with Intel i7 processor. The display is 1920 by 1200 for the resolution, refresh rate is 120 hertz and the graphics card is the RTX 3050 and the low tier model also has a display that is 1920 by 1200, 120 hertz refresh rate but that model does not have the RTX 3050, instead it uses the Intel Iris XE. The prices start from US 1499 to 1899 and here in Singapore, the model with the Intel i5 is not sold and the prices here in Singapore for the Intel i7 model is $2798, that's the lowest price I can find online. And the top tier model, the Intel i9 model, is $5,349 Singapore dollars. Those prices do not include the ROG XG Mobile external GPU. And this GPU, from what I can see, comes with two graphics card options. And this one with the Radeon RX 6850M XT, this is from AMD. This is priced at US $1,400. The one with the RTX 3080 is $1,500. And here in Singapore, the eGPU with RTX 3080 is $2,300 Singapore dollars. So the prices add up very quickly. My review is from the perspective of a visual content creator. So I will be talking about drawing performance with the ASUS Pen as well. And since this is a gaming tablet, I will have to talk about gaming performance with the very few games that I play. And just to give you the bottom line up front, this is a stylish looking tablet which you probably can't tell from the front and I'm not referring to the RGB keyboard. The back looks pretty nice. And the performance for tablet is top tier. So the 12th gen Intel i7 is quite powerful. This has 16 gigs of RAM, so it's good for multitasking. The internal SSD speed is three gigabytes per second, read and write. It comes with two USB-C ports. One is Thunderbolt 4, the other is USB 3.2 Gen 2, and there is one USB-A here. And the gaming performance with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 is decent. It can be used to play some games, but not AAA titles such as Red Dead Redemption. I was only able to get 30 frames per second with Red Dead Redemption, but with other less graphics intensive games, I can get higher frame rates. The two side facing speakers have surprisingly good audio quality. This keyboard cover is well made for gaming. The overall gaming experience is quite good thanks to the keyboard, the audio and visual quality. Colors on this IPS LCD look good out of the box. I measure color support for 100% sRGB and a maximum brightness of 364 nits. So in terms of visual quality, this can definitely be used for visual content creation with the only limitation being the display size, which is 13 by 4 inches. The resolution is 1920 by 1200, so there is slight pixelation. That resolution on a 13.4 inch display still looks alright, all the visuals still look sharp enough. Downsides. The main downside is I was only able to get two and a half hours of battery life with non-gaming usage and that's with the optimal settings which is said to get you the best or the longest battery life. I have seen review websites claim four hour battery life but for me it's much shorter. 
So this is a tablet that you're probably going to use with the cable um, plugged in most of the time. Other downsides are minor. The fans come on quite often. The pen is good for writing but not for drawing. Let's take a look at the items included in the box and this is a rather stylish box. This box holds just the tablet and I've already taken out the tablet so there are some designs inside as well. There is another big brown cardboard box with all these items. This is a 100 watt USB-C charger, a power cable extension. This is a carrying case. The material for the carrying case is water resistant. It's going to repel water and the zip is designed to keep out water as well. This carrying case is well padded and inside there is a strap and there is a smaller carrying case which is also padded. This small carrying case is also designed to keep out water and this is the zip and you can see the teeth behind the front fabric. The big case is for the tablet and this small one is for the ROG XG Mobile external GPU. This is the keyboard cover and case and there is a pen. This is the ASUS pen SA201H the build quality is extremely solid. Battery life is said to be one year and this battery is removable. This is an AA, AA battery. There are two side buttons here which are set to erase and right click by default. The customization for the side buttons is very limited and the pen tip has slight movement to it. This pen is quite comfortable to hold. It supports Microsoft Pen Protocol 2, so it has palm rejection. It supports pressure sensitivity up to slightly over 4,000 levels. There is also tilt sensitivity. However, tilt doesn't work that consistently. I'll talk more about this when I talk about drawing. All I want to say now is this pen has pretty good handwriting performance with the right note-taking app. The included keyboard case and cover is quite good. It's quite thick. When I try to flex it, there is some creaking sound, but the overall build quality is good. The keys have backlight. The keys are well spaced with good travel, so the tapping experience is good. The touchpad here is on the smaller side. It works fine, just that it's small. This keyboard uses a very standard layout, which is good. The function button is between control and the windows button. There is another control button on the right side so that you can use keyboard shortcuts here. There are home and pitch up and down shortcuts for the arrow keys. The function button shortcuts are volume control, microphone, fan speed, screenshot, brightness control, projection, disable or enable the touchpad, keyboard lighting, airplane mode. You can tell that this keyboard is made with gamers in mind because there is this little extruded dot here on the W key. The material used to make the keyboard case seems to be water resistant on the inner side. On the outer side, this feels like fabric so this can attract dust quite easily and there is some design element here as well. The keyboard case uses very strong magnets to attach to the tablet and you can use the keyboard at this angle or flat on the table but it doesn't go flat completely so sometimes when I hit the keyboard accidentally the magnets are so strong that it would snap back right up so I just use this at this angle all the time. To customize the keyboard lighting, you have to use the ASUS Armory Crate software, which for some reason isn't pre-installed at least on this review unit. So with this software, you can look at the resources used by the system, the RAM, the temperature, you can adjust the fan speed, and there is also the boot up sound, which um, is pretty cool. So here is where you can adjust the lighting for the keyboard and there are different types of lighting effect. The main limitation here is there is no way to adjust the individual colors. So if you choose red for the keyboard, all the keys will be red. So if you want to have the keys display random colors, um, each key has a different color. That won't be possible 
with this software. Let's look at the tablet. So this is the ASUS ROG Flow Z13 and this is a stylish looking tablet which you probably can't tell from the front but if you look at the back there are many design elements and there is this window here where you can see the circuit board inside. This is very cool and you can customize the lighting as well. Here's a closer look. And this is the rainbow lighting effect and the rainbow is actually moving to the right side. There are words here for those who dare and this looks like 0 and 6. And these are actually grills for air intake. And there are grills here as well. And here, this tablet is not meant to be used flat on the table. You have to use the kickstand so that you don't block the air intake reels. And ASUS has also designed this circuit window to extrude slightly so that if you do use this tablet flat on the table, at least the grills are not covered there is still a tiny little gap between the grills and the tabletop hot air will exhaust from the top and the cooling system is quite effective the words here are republic of gamers and there is one 8 megapixel camera here the kickstand even has a cutout for the circuit board window and this is how low the kickstand can go the hinge is quite stiff which is nice you can see some design elements on the kickstand as well. And on the left side here, this extruded part is for you to push out the kickstand. There are design elements on the back of the kickstand as well. This part will go on to this part here. But these three parts and this part, they are actually not necessary, but they are there as design elements. There's a micro SD card slot here with UHS 2 speeds, which is up to 300 megabytes per second. I do not have a card that fast to test the speed though. Internal storage is user upgradable. All you need is a small cross type screwdriver. And behind this cover is an M.2 2230 NVMe SSD. This tablet is available with either 512 gigs or 1 terabyte of SSD storage. So to increase storage capacity, you can either use micro SD card or swap out the SSD. By the way, I happen to have a Microsoft Surface Pro 8 and this doesn't have the micro SD card slot, which is a bummer because with the micro SD card slot, you can increase storage capacity very affordably. Right now, you can get a 400 gig Sandisk Extreme Pro micro SD card for just 75 US dollars. Here's a look at the hinge mechanism. Here's what's on the right side of the tablet a power button with a fingerprint scanner. These are volume buttons. This is USB Type A with USB 2 speeds. This is the latch to open the kickstand. This is a 3.5 mm audio jack. There is one speaker here. On the left side of the tablet, there is another speaker here. And this is the ASUS XG Mobile interface for external GPU. It comprises of this USB-C with USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. And this is actually hidden behind a removable cover. And in the middle, there is another USB-C port with Thunderbolt 4. That's the charging light indicator. So this tablet only has two USB ports and for a tablet this thick to have only two USB ports, it's quite limiting. If you want to connect multiple devices to the tablet, it would be good and really helpful to get a Thunderbolt dock. The one that I'm using for my Mac is the Kao Digit TS3 Plus. This is also compatible with Windows. Anyway, regardless of which Thunderbolt dock you get, Make sure to get one with power delivery so that the tablet can be charged while it's connected. And this model can only deliver up to 85 watts. This is a nice looking display. It's 13.4 inches. Resolution is 1920 by 1200. So the aspect ratio is 16 by 10, which is good. Better compared to 16 by 9. And the refresh rate is 120 hertz. So when it comes to scrolling, zooming in and out, 
all those animations um, it's actually quite fluid and also when you're gaming if you can game at higher frame rates the animation is going to look smoother and the gaming experience is going to be better there is slight pixelation with 1080p plus resolution on a 13.4 inch display but it's not that bad the visuals are still quite sharp with a color calibrator i measured color support for 100 srgb 79 percent adobe rgb 74% NTSC and 80% P3. Colors on this display look good out of the box. So this is essentially a 100% sRGB display and can be used for graphic design work if you are fine with the color gamut that I measured. The advertised brightness is 500 nits but I was only able to measure up to 364. And also this 13.4 inch display size, um, it's fine for graphic design work so I can have palettes on the right side and still get a good amount of canvas space to work with. However, I would prefer to work with a larger display when it comes to visual content creation. If you want to connect an external display to the tablet, it would be good to have a display that has power delivery so that the tablet can be charged while it's connected. Here I have a portable display that uses USB-C to C connection so it's actually drawing the power from the tablet. It's going to drain the tablet battery much faster so I have to connect the tablet to external power source as well and now the two ports are used up. That's why I recommend you get a Thunderbolt dock if you can because USB-C adapters such as this one that I have here is not powered and this will not work well with devices that require power. This is an IPS LCD so viewing angles are pretty good. If you tilt the display this way you can see slight drop in brightness but the colors don't shift much. If you view the display from left and right at extreme angles the colors and brightness are not really affected. The display is glossy and ASUS has applied anti-reflective coating on top and it works pretty well. So this is how reflective glass can really be. There is an option to get the display with 4K plus resolution but it doesn't make sense to go with that option because the graphics card is not going to be powerful enough for 4K gaming so going with the 1080p plus resolution 120Hz refresh rate display is I think a more sensible choice. Let's talk about performance. So this review unit comes with the 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700H processor which has 6 performance cores at 2.3 GHz and 8 efficiency cores. So this tablet is actually more powerful than some of the mid-range laptops out there and it also has the Nvidia GeForce RTX 3050 graphics card in it. These are the read and write speeds for the internal SSD so it's about 3 gigabytes per second which is pretty good. This tablet is very responsive and great at multitasking and this can plow through visual content creation work with ease and I'm talking about graphic design with graphic design apps such as Photoshop, Illustrator, editing photos with Adobe Lightroom and editing videos with DaVinci Resolve. When I exported photos into Adobe Lightroom, the thumbnails were able to generate really quickly which surprised me because I have used laptops with rather similar specifications but those laptops took much longer time to generate the thumbnails and of course once the thumbnails are generated you can edit very quickly and the uh, edits will show up instantly. This tablet is powerful enough to edit videos. I can edit simple cut and join 4K 25fps or 50fps videos without using proxies and there will not be any drop frames. Video export time is quite good. I can export a 5 minute project with H.265 under 2 minutes and 50 seconds. The thing with doing work on this tablet is because the battery life isn't that good you have to connect the tablet to power most of the time. Battery capacity is 56 watt hour. Based on the analytics and my personal experience, I was only able to get two and a half hours of 
battery life with non-gaming usage. For some reason, the tablet still uses power when it goes to sleep. So if you want to prevent this, um, you have to shut down the tablet completely. I wasn't able to figure out why it still uses power when the tablet is supposed to be sleeping. And here you can see a lot of up, down, up, down. That's because while recording this review, I had to charge the tablet several times because the battery life was going down much faster than I expected. The good news is the battery has fast charging, so you can charge the battery to 50% in half an hour. Lithium batteries have a life cycle, so according to research, the battery capacity will deplete to 80% after 300 to 500 charge cycles. And because you need to charge the battery on this tablet that often, you can rack up the charge or the cycle count very quickly. So if I'm talking about four to five hours of battery life today, one year later with regular charging, the battery life could be three to four hours. Gaming performance is decent with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050, but it's definitely nowhere near the RTX 3060's performance. So with this game, Stray, I was able to get 40 frames per second with Red Dead Redemption it's 30 frames per second, 2 point hospital 25 to 35 frames per second and Hades 120 frames per second. This is how the fan sounds when you are gaming. So the fans are quite loud when gaming but thankfully you can have the speakers go even louder. This is Red Dead Redemption 2. I can get 30 to 35 frames per second. The animation is not as smooth compared to less demanding games, but this is still very playable. And right now the fans are spinning much faster and much louder compared to the earlier game. And I have also switched to using the included Asus charger instead of my own charger because while gaming earlier, that charger was not able to provide enough power to charge the tablet so with the included ASUS charger this is actually powerful enough to charge the tablet while gaming even though both chargers are 100 watt this is Hades at 120 frames per second so gaming at 120 frames per second is definitely quite enjoyable let's talk about the drawing experience this pen, the ASUS Pen SA201H is good with writing and note taking with the appropriate note taking apps but when it comes to drawing the performance isn't that great. And also with the design of this tablet um, there are some issues when it comes to drawing. So the hinge is stiff enough for you to prop up the tablet and draw like this as long as you don't press down too hard. If you press down too hard, it's of course going to sink. So maybe you'll want to use a tablet stand instead because this is going to be more stable. So if you put the tablet like this on the tablet stand, remember there are air intake grills behind. This is going to block the air intake grills. So that obviously is not good. So maybe I will have to deploy the kickstand as well even though it's already on this tablet stand and this tablet stand can actually work with the keyboard case so it's not too bad so I can still draw while I have access to the keyboard otherwise I will just remove the keyboard and use a Bluetooth keyboard on the side. Let's look at the pen performance. First, the initial activation force. So the pen tip is in contact with the surface, but there are no lines because the initial activation force with this pen, the ASUS Pen SA201H is higher compared to those pens from graphic tablets and pen displays and also the iPad, Apple Pencil and Samsung S Pen. So to get a line, you have to press down a bit harder and you can see when drawing diagonal lines there is a slight jitter let me just zoom in for you to see 
let me draw a bit slower for you to see there is slight jitter and it's also not as easy to maintain the consistent line width when you're trying to maintain consistent pressure if you draw faster you can maintain consistent line width more easily but sometimes you don't want to draw that fast because you want to draw slower to be more careful and that's where you can see the line thickness will vary the higher than usual initial activation force also affects how the lines taper so the lines are unable to taper smoothly and sharply if you want to draw lines with consistent width you have to draw a bit faster otherwise you're going to see the diagonal line wobble and jitter so there is some jitter here if the lines are thicker it would disguise the wobble and the jitter and also the variation with the thickness is going to be less obvious now even though the display is 120 hertz most of the drawing programs they will run at 60 hertz so you will see a gap as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip the latency doesn't affect drawing performance it's the line quality that affects drawing performance let's take a look at this quick sketch i have drawn with affinity photo and i have difficulties drawing this due to the pen performance so let's zoom in finger gesture navigation is very smooth so if you take a look at this line here you can see there is some wobble it's due to the pen performance as well as how slippery the glossy display is so let me try and redraw that line again here okay now it looks fine the lines are now quite straight but i have to be very careful and notice how thick these lines are I have difficulty creating lines I have difficulty creating lines to specific thickness so I could be drawing wheels and as I try to join the line back because the initial activation force isn't that great and the pen isn't that great at detecting changes when you're drawing with minimal pressure things like this can happen so as I try to taper this off it doesn't taper off so this line or this circle it doesn't look smooth and all these circles they don't look smooth here's another problematic area so if you take a look at this outline here this was drawn with three separate lines so the lines are not that smooth it would be good to draw this with just one line so that it's smooth but sometimes you just want to draw multiple lines and join them together and this is what's going to happen it's very difficult to join the lines smoothly and i have some problems oops too thick so it's very challenging due to the sensitivity of the pen and the initial activation force to join or draw smooth lines um, yep it's difficult another thing that affects drawing experience is windows isn't that great with palm rejection so with this app there is actually perfect palm rejection so if i draw with my finger or if i have my palm on the display i will not introduce any straight strokes but the thing with windows os and windows ui is sometimes when you have the palm here on the right side and you move it like this it calls up the calendar and the notifications dialog boxes and also sometimes when you're resting your palm on the display you would actually click on some of the palettes here or move the palettes around so it's best to just hide the palettes while you're drawing but it doesn't prevent you from swiping the calendar out this happens on the microsoft surface pro as well and this does not happen on the ipad or samsung tablets because ipads and samsung tablets have way better palm rejection and if you think it's the problem with the pen i have tried the microsoft slim pen 2 and it has the exact same performance as the asus pen 
so sometimes when I'm drawing if I want a thin line sometimes the lines come out much thicker than I expect because the pen is just not that sensitive when it comes to detecting pressure changes the pen has tilt sensitivity and the tilt performance will depend on the apps you use so with Photoshop here I can draw broad strokes I can have the pen point down like this to combine the strokes and I can draw broad strokes like this combine the lines like this so it works fine tilt works fine with Photoshop but the cursor will not follow the direction of the pen I wasn't able to get Tilt to work with Krita and Tilt usually works with Krita by default. The ASUS Pen uses Microsoft Pen Protocol 2 which means you can use the Microsoft Surface Pen and the Microsoft Slim Pen 2 on this tablet as well. This app is Concepts and this is the Microsoft Slim Pen 2. So let me show you how Tilt is supposed to work with this app. When I tilt the pen, I can shade, I can create broad strokes like this very easily. With the ASUS pen, when I tilt the pen, you can see there is no tilt. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. So I suspect the tilt sensitivity, it's just not that sensitive. There is one stroke here with tilt. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is one if you want to draw casual sketches like this it's fine but if you want to create professional art notice what just happened that's windows palm rejection not working quite well so if you want to create professional sketches um, this is oops palm rejection with windows just doesn't work that great um, in short i don't really recommend this tablet for drawing purposes. What are the advantages of a gaming tablet versus a gaming laptop? I can only think of two advantages. First, the heat is on the tablet, so the keyboard is not going to be hot, so it's going to be more comfortable to use the keyboard while it's gaming. And this is a pretty good keyboard for gaming. And the second advantage is this keyboard case and cover can be detached so if you want to you can use your display as a standalone display and also this is going to be more compact if you don't need or don't want to bring the keyboard around this is just 1.18 kg and being able to remove the keyboard means there is no keyboard to look at while you are gaming and that can make the gaming experience more enjoyable so for gaming laptops, the advantages would be you get more ports, better battery life for non-gaming usage, maybe a larger display. Actually, the weight advantage of this tablet and keyboard is not going to be that significant compared to laptops with similar display size. For example, with the VivoBook Pro 14 OLED, this laptop actually has very similar specifications compared to the tablet. But that laptop has a lot more ports so that laptop is just 1.4 kg which is lighter compared to this tablet with the keyboard case and cover i guess another advantage to this tablet is you can connect an external gpu to get more graphics performance so you can use the asus xg mobile with nvidia geforce rtx 3080 which is noticeably more powerful compared to the RTX 3050. However, the eGPU is sold separately and it's quite pricey. And if you are going to be using that eGPU that often, why not just buy a laptop with built-in RTX 3060 or 3080? So should you buy a gaming tablet versus a gaming laptop? Because you can actually buy or find gaming laptops with similar specifications at lower prices. So I guess it really comes down to which features you value. With a gaming tablet, you can remove the keyboard so as to bring the display closer so the gaming experience can be better. But with a gaming laptop, you get a larger display. You get more ports and also a longer battery life. In terms of value for money, I would go with gaming 
laptops. And if you want to go with gaming laptops, the one to check out from ASUS would be the ASUS VivoBook Pro 14. Right, so to conclude, I really enjoy using this tablet. It's very powerful and I've been playing a lot of games on this tablet and it's very enjoyable. The display, the audio makes for an enjoyable gaming experience. The main downside would be the battery life, which is just two and a half hours. So most of the time you will be using the tablet connected to power. And when it comes to doing work, since I do graphic design, um, I edit photos and videos, this screen size 13.4 inches is big enough, but I would prefer to connect an external display to it. For drawing, this is not a tablet I would recommend. For writing, it works fine. So if you want a very powerful tablet or a tablet for gaming, you can consider the ASUS ROG Flow Z13. Just take note of the downside, which is battery life.